Hi, this is uh, William Smith from CX Today, bringing you all the latest customer experience industry news. Um, today, I'm thrilled to be joined by John Ball, um, SVP and GM Customer Workflow Business Unit at, at ServiceNow, uh, to find out a little bit about kind of the importance AI has to play in customer service and how the customer service market is evolving in general. So, yeah, John, thank you for, for joining us. I wonder if you just tell me a little bit about yourself and your role at ServiceNow. Sure. Thanks, Will. Uh, great to be here today. So I look after what we call the customer workflows uh, business unit. So that's basically the customer service and support um, uh, uh, products that we have. So uh, both for uh, traditional sort of contact centers, uh, call centers, as well as field service management. Mm -hmm. I've been in and out of customer service for about 25 years. I've sort of bounced between customer service and AI and BI. Started uh, my career at Business Objects way back in uh, the early 90s when it was a tiny little company, um, and then uh, founded my own company in uh, customer self-service for telecoms. Uh, as I say, sort of bounced back and forth, so AI is near and dear to my heart. Been working on it for decades. Mm -hmm. Well, I wonder how do you see customer demands um, evolving lately, and what do you see as kind of the necessary response from businesses? Sure. Well, I think uh, it's pretty clear that uh, customers are more and more demanding uh, of great customer service uh, and great experiences in general. Mm. Um, they sort of want to interact in the channel of their choice at the point of need uh, and sort of they expect massive transparency and speed. Uh, mm. And a lot of this is really being driven by all the choice that's out there and specifically uh, the overall direct to consumer trend that you know we've been witnessing. And really, that is kind of all of that together is driving what uh, we call digital transformation. And I know right. that some people think it's a buzzword. I don't. I think it's very real and it has huge implications for the overall customer experience, uh, starting with what we call the engagement layer. That's sort of where, you know, the request comes in. Um, and that's that's all about providing modern digital engagement across all the channels. So web chat asynchronous messaging and of course old school telephony people still call in a lot right um but but engagement is really only half the equation when it comes to customer experience the other half is really how you get the work done and how you fulfill the request and this oh. typically involves sort of orchestrating a series of tasks and that orchestration is what we call workflows and all of this orchestration is done in what we call the operations later. Some, some people call it the messy middle office. And you may not actually touch it directly as a customer, mm -hmm. but how efficient and flexible that middle office is, how that operations layer is, it sure does impact your customer experience. Uh, think about, you know, basically you're not, you're not contacting customer service <laughs> to have a conversation. You're contacting them because you have a problem, you have a need, you have an issue to resolve. And so uh, I often say that, you know, uh, traditionally the market has sort of focused too much on the engagement layer, which is all about the receiving of the request. Given, and it's great to give customers choice and a great a seamless experience. But if you don't follow through and actually execute the request and get it done, then your customer experience is horrible. Right. And it's, it's sort of the, uh, it's the, you know, it's, it's a known issue, but it's sort of sh uh, swept under the rug too often in, in customer service. Mm. Well, and you mentioned your, your experience in AI. I wonder what extent would you say that AI um, is being deployed for customer experience? And do you have any kind of example use cases? Sure. Uh, so uh, AI has lots and lots of use cases in customer service. Mm. Um, it's it's, uh, you know, when you think about it, uh, AI is all about augmenting humans to get a job done faster or more efficiently. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there are, you know, tons of different use cases, everything from virtual agents, some people call them chatbots, to case classification, to document intelligence, where uh, the computer or the AI understands the document. And then that gives you all kinds of uh, uh, downstream capabilities like question answering, or uh, automatic uh, uh, translation of a document into database records. So you think about forms um, or better knowledge bases. So lots of different use cases. The two sort of areas that uh, uh, I'm seeing recurring, uh, you know, very, very often uh, uh, because it's, it, it directly impacts efficiency mm -hmm. are virtual agents and case classification. So if you think about it, virtual agents there's a lot of mundane tasks that you can automate completely through a, a chatbot. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. Um, uh, State of Tennessee is one of our customers uh, using um, uh, uh, customer workflows for citizen services. So think of everything from SNAP is is basically the new term for food stamps here right. in the U.S., to unemployment insurance, to uh, vocational training, lots of different citizen services for the state. Um, and uh, they've deployed uh, customer workflows, including virtual agent. And for the folks who are going online, they're getting 10 times faster service. So right. it's, it's, right. it's really, really impactful. Another one of our large customers um, is deflecting roughly 30% of all interactions through the virtual agent. So, and if you think about that, uh, it's both better for the customer because you have a faster uh, time to re- resolution, if you will, mm-hmm. but it's also better for the agents. And, and this is also true for case classification. Case classification, email to case is like a classic uh, self-service capability that a lot of people deploy. So you can email uh, your, your provider, uh, they create a case. But unfortunately, in the old world, uh, you had what are called triage agents. These agents literally read an email and then create a case, uh, filling out all the fields, like, is it a billing question? Is it a product question? What's the priority? Well, first of all, that's a mundane and soul-sucking task. So agents don't like to do that. Mm -hmm. Secondly, it takes a lot of time. So if you can actually automate that process, if you can understand the email, infer what the fields are on the case and then route it automatically to the right agent, you're going to speed the processing time for the customer, better customer experience, and you have a better agent experience because the agents, they actually want to spend time with customers. They want to work on harder problems. Mm -hmm. And the state of mind of an agent is really important in customer service. So if you can improve both the agent and the customer experience, it's a win-win. And that's for me, that's what digital transformation is all about. It's it's basically driving better customer end-to-end experiences and driving operational efficiencies. Um, well, and I wonder, obviously, um, we've been through some, some tough times in the past year and a half. How has the pandemic kind of changed the customer service industry? And how would you say that ServiceNow has responded? Great question. Uh, it was the big wake-up call. I mean, we've seen these trends of digital transformation direct to consumer for, for quite some time. And literally overnight, you had millions of customer service agents sent home. Like they had no choice. Everyone went home at the beginning of the pandemic. Well, the companies that had invested in modern digital customer service platforms did okay. The ones, you know, in fact, uh, they actually thrived. The ones who didn't had all kinds of problems. Secondly, if you, if you go back to my whole engagement layer and operations layer, if they had not actually done digital workflows in the operations layer, they also had problems because, you know, Bobby couldn't talk to Susie, couldn't talk to Jimmy to get the job done, which is typically what happens in that operations layer. If you haven't structured it with digital workflows, it's all glued together with email, swivel chair, chat, and all kinds of stuff. Well, when everyone's remote, it's a lot harder because you don't have that ability to tap into tribal knowledge as easily. So it was a big, big wake up call for the entire industry. And I, I think, you know, uh, as I say, folks who had invested in modern platforms uh, did great. Those who didn't are all, you know, uh, rushing to get it done. Mm-hmm. How we responded, uh, I think uh, there's a couple of really good examples. One uh, is maybe something that you would consider a little bit outside of traditional customer service is vaccine administration management. So uh, when you think about, uh, you know, this amazing achievement and uh, of creating vaccines in literally just a year, but then the last mile of getting the jabs in the arms is actually a really big challenge. Mm-hmm. It's a huge challenge because, uh, you know, you had all kinds of different things going on, the different protocols of, of uh, social distancing, of wait times, et cetera. And so we built very quickly uh, in literally three or four weeks, and it shows the agility of the platform, uh, vaccine administration management. We then iterated over time, added more and more features, and it really solves three problems. One, uh, consumer grade scheduling experience Mm -hmm. at scale, uh, very flexible as well. And I'll touch on that in a second. Second is contactless clinician experience. So when you go in and get your jab, you don't have to fill out a bunch of paper forms and Excel spreadsheets. It's all 100% digital. And then last site administration, vaccine site administration. And this is really important because the protocols were changing all the time. 
you had different vaccine types. You had, you know, one that has two jabs. It has to be 22 days between the jabs. The other one is 30 days, et cetera. Mm. And we, uh, so we, we built this and we've deployed it. We have amazing success. The entire country of Scotland, so NHS Scotland uses our, our solution for that. Right. Uh, the largest state in Germany, the largest state in Australia, um, uh, various uh, large states here in, in the US. And, and sort of for me, uh, a great example of the agility and the time to value and why ServiceNow has such a huge advantage in the market is the deployment at Children's Minnesota. So Children's Minnesota is a large hospital in, in, in Minnesota. And uh, they uh, we actually uh, talked about this at Knowledge 21. Uh, there's a great interview um, with, the, with the leader there. They deployed in five days. So five-day deployment of vaccine administration management is like record-breaking. And it's super, super important because literally every day counted and still counts in this pandemic. So being able to very rapidly deploy and then continually change sort of the business logic and, and the process to comply to the latest CDC guidelines is it's, it's, it's a hard thing to do. And that, that really the agility of the platform is, is really uh, our strength. Mm. Well, and I wonder going forwards, what do you kind of see as the technologies that are going to be most important to, to future development of the platform? Uh, great question. So first, you know, uh, we just talked about AI. I mean, AI is, I think, going to be a pervasive uh, sort of change agent in the entire software industry. It just is. It's it, it changes the way that you actually build software because there are certain things that can be automated, certain things that can be made more efficient, and that it sort of fundamentally changes everyone in the software industry. Specifically in custom workflows, it's very important. I, I talked about some of the different capabilities we're seeing more and more. Uh, you know, I've been, uh, I started my career in digital signal processing a long time ago. It's kind of the same math. The big right. difference is, is now we have a lot more data and a lot more compute. So the stuff actually works. <laughs> Back then it was, it's kind of hard to make it work. Right. Um, uh, so AI is clearly a big one. I think uh, some others that I'd touch on are uh, process optimization. So process mm -hmm. optimization is really important because a lot of companies and a lot of uh, customer service departments don't really realize where the problems are, where the bottlenecks are. And so we've released in, in Quebec, uh, our, our latest release, uh, a capability called process optimization. And the big difference is, is since we use a product-driven uh, approach to the configuration of those workflows, so that orchestration of the series of tasks that I talked about, that's mm. sort of the, the operational layer. Since it's all product driven, it's not low level code. We can actually track and log everything that's going through the platform and then visualize it, literally visualize the process flows and then apply AI on top of that to then figure out where are the bottlenecks, where are the uh, uh, sort of errors. Like this is a classic use case in customer service where cases get reassigned. Right. They get reassigned and then that is slowing the process. And the reason why they're getting reassigned sometimes is simply not all the information was filled out uh, on the case at the pr previous step. Mm -hmm. Well, you can identify that. You can identify where there's maybe an upstream bottleneck where you either apply automation, could be AI, it could be simple rules, it all depends, or you add more resource to it. Because uh, you know when you think about a customer service operation, it's all about an, an entire process flow. Requests come in, you have to work them, you have to resolve them. And depending on the case type, depending on the use case, you can have different bottlenecks in your system. You want to make that overall system super efficient. So process optimization is another one. Workforce optimization, I think is super important. Uh, mm -hmm. It's gonna become more important because of the hybrid works uh, environment that we're in. We have one of our customers with 4,000 customer service agents and they're all working from home. It's right. kind of crazy, but they literally, they left the call center. They're all working from home. So how do you manage 4,000 customer service agents all working from home? You need workforce optimization. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, it gives you insight into agent productivity, who's available, who's, you know, who's going on a shift break, whatever it is that it's, it's even more important in this hybrid world that we're going to live in for a while. I mean, it's, uh, I'm, you know, we're not going to go completely back to where we were and we're not going to stay in, in lockdown. And that hybrid world makes it actually more complicated. So you need these, these capabilities like I, like I just discussed.
Mm. Well, uh, John, thank you. I think that's all my questions. I, I really appreciate your time. It's, it's been great to speak to you. Thank you very much. This has been awesome. great. Well, uh, yeah, and if you've enjoyed this video, please do share on social media and subscribe to our channel as well. This has been uh, William Smith for CX Today, and thanks again to John for his insight, and, and thank you for watching. Thanks.